everyone check out class 19 um we used velocity versus time and position versus time grass for objects in free fall um to find max height acceleration time and velocity remember when i say free fall um, i'm not just referring to objects falling but also going up in the air um, basically free falls anytime an object is under the influence of gravity only um, so just to do a quick little recap here um, slope of position versus time is velocity slope of velocity versus time is acceleration and the area under velocity versus time graphs represents displacement so what we did was we basically you know looked at velocity versus time and position versus time graphs for a scenario where a ball is thrown up with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second goes to the top and comes back down and has velocity of negative 20 meters per second when it lands um so let's just go through this really quickly so what is the acceleration um it's not exactly negative 9.8 meters per second squared, though it should be. Um, well, velocity versus time graph, find the slope. Slope, okay, it comes out to be negative 10 meters per second squared. Uh, what is the velocity of the ball at its apex? Zero, okay, we know that. So that's at this point right here. This is the apex, that point there. What are these little like uh, lines? That, there was a box there with like some text from a textbook and I just got rid of it, All right? How long does it take the ball to reach its apex? Well, this is where it's thrown at zero. This is where it's at its apex when the velocity is zero. Looks like two seconds to me. How long is the ball in the air for? Well, let's see. It's thrown up at zero seconds and it is caught and comes down at uh, four seconds. So a total of four seconds. Also, we know that time up equals time down. If it takes two seconds to get to the apex, it took another two seconds to come down. Um, what is the initial velocity? Positive 20 meters per second. Was the final velocity? Negative 20 meters per second. That makes sense, right? If you throw a ball up with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second, it slows down on its way up. Z all the way down to zero, and then on its way down, it starts speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. And by the time you catch it, it's going 20 meters per second the opposite direction. We use negative to annotate to denote that. Uh, what is the maximum height reached by the ball? Hint, how do you find displacement for velocity versus time? So to find how high it went, well, look at the area underneath um, while it's traveling upward. Now, it's really important when you find area, it's only between the line and the zero axis. Since the zero axis is in the middle here, it's really only to this point. Everything down here is not included, okay? Because that's below the zero axis. So do be mindful of that. It's always between the line and the zero axis, or in this case, between the line and the zero axis this way, all right? That's more of a calculus integral thing. Um, you'll understand that more when you go to calculus. So one half base times height, one half, two is the base, height is 20. So you get 20 meters, so that's how high it went. You could use kinematics to find the max height too. You could use VF squared because VF squared plus two AD. Zero would be the velocity at the max height, 20 would be the initial velocity, plus two, negative 10, d, d is 20. This is actually the same scenario, but just pretend you didn't just this question. This is a position versus time graph. This looks a little bit more like we, what you'd expect. Ball goes up, ball comes down. Before it looks like this, you know, the velocity is going down constantly. Well, not really. The velocity is very high to start, slows down on the way up, and then increases in the negative direction on the way down. All right, so slope of position versus time is velocity. Is the slope here constant? Absolutely not. So the object must be accelerating, right? Because if the velocity is not constant, it is accelerating. Okay, acceleration and by definition, by definition is change in velocity over time. Specifically, the acceleration is negative 10 meters per second squared. The dead giveaway is the curved shape of the position versus time graph. Anytime you see a curved position versus time graph, you know it's going to be an accelerating object. How long is the ball in the air for? Well, let's say it's thrown up right here at zero seconds and it comes down right over here, about four seconds, maybe a little longer. How high did it go? Well, look at here, 20 meters. That's how high it went. Use your answer for part F, so use the max height to find the initial velocity of the ball. So there's several ways to do this. Um, so for starters, um, I think we use the equation, there's actually a lot you could use, the final, excuse me, the initial velocity of the ball. So you could use the final velocity um, of zero at the apex equals V initial plus A, which is negative 10 times T. Why do we use two for T? Because that's the time to the apex, right? We're using the velocity at the apex, we have to use the time at the apex. So that would be 20 meters per second. We could also use the equation VF squared equals VI squared plus two AD, where VF again at the apex is zero, um, equals VI squared plus two AD. Okay, we know that D is the max height and we can find V initial 20. You could also use this equation here, D equals V initial times time plus one half AD squared. D, you know, is 20. That's how high it went. T is the time to the apex because that's when it goes 20. Um, so that'd be two. This would be negative 10. This would be two and over the square. You get 20 as well. So there's three different ways to do this one. Um, but I did, I did ask you to use your, pass, your answer for part F here. So you should have used one of these two methods. All right. All right. So these were homework questions. Um, we went over them pretty extensively in class, but we will go over them again right now. 
So number three says the ball is dropped from a cliff. It falls for 1.5 seconds. How fast is it going? How far does it fall? So it only looks like you're given one piece of information here, 1.5 seconds as the time, but you're actually given a lot more. It's dropped right there, the initial zero. Since it's dropped, we're going to make acceleration positive because it's speeding up on the way down. So we're going to um, make it positive 9.8 meters per second squared. So to find how fast it's going, just that's V final after you know 1.5 seconds. So VF equals VI plus AT, and you get VF is 14.7 meters per second. Now, to find D, you could use the equation VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD, but that would require you to use your VF that you just found, and maybe you made a mistake. So try not to use that if you don't have to. So you can use the equation D equals V initial times time plus 1 half AT squared. Um, you know, people always ask, like, how do you know which one to use? Well, it's really a practice. You have to know what you're given and look at your equations and see which one you could possibly use, okay? So we have D equals the initial times time plus 1 half AT squared. We know the initial velocity is 0, so that whole term goes away. 1 half A T squared gives about 11 meters. All right. So let's talk about this question. Um, there can be definitely some confusion here. A tennis ball is thrown up in the air, and it's caught, all right? So... I am telling you, out of convenience, it is very easy and much easier for us to say that the final position of the tennis ball is at its highest point. Is that actually where it ends? No, but in any physics problem, we have to choose an ending point. Even if the ball comes up and lands in your hand, the ball doesn't stop existing when it comes lands in your hand, right? You walk around with it then, right? So a physics problem's ending is defined by you. Its beginning is defined by you. You have all the power here. So I am telling you from my experience that it is very convenient for us to label the initial position when it's thrown and the final position at its highest point. So we're gonna pretend the problem stops there. There's something really powerful about defining the, the highest point as its final position. You know the final velocity then. You know the velocity at its apex is zero meters per second. So you gain a given by doing that. The initial velocity is positive 22.5 meters per second and the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared because it's slowing down or hurting the initial velocity. So you have three givens, even though it only looked like you had one. We're looking for D. So we don't have time, so we can use the equation VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD, and we get 25.8 meters. Now, how long is the ball in the air for? You have to be very careful here. We're going to use the same diagram as before and the same givens. So we're going to pretend the problem ends at the top. Now, here's the problem with doing that. You do VF equals VI plus AT. VF is zero because that's the velocity at the top. VI is 22.5 because, well, that's the initial velocity, plus negative 9.8 T, soft for T. You get 2.3. Watch out. 2.3 is not the total time of flight. 2.3 is the time it takes to get from the initial position to the final position. Makes sense, because those, those are the points you'd find, final and initial. Well, we know that if it takes 2.3 seconds for the ball to go up, it should take 2.3 seconds for the ball to come back down. So you simply double that, and you get the total time, 4.6 seconds. Some students brought up a point. Can't you get the total time in one shot by making the final position when the ball is down here after it lands? You can, because you know that when the ball lands, its final velocity is negative 22.5 meters per, se per second. So try it out. Try V final is negative 22.5 meters per second. So the final position would be when it lands. The initial position is still 22.5 meters per second plus negative 9.8 times T. You actually get 4.6 seconds right away for T. So that's pretty cool that it works out like that. Why don't we do that for this problem? Why don't we make the final position when it lands? Well, unfortunately, making the final position at its landing point can't help us in finding the maximum height. That's why it's preferable in all of these questions to make the final position at its maximum height and then simply double the time. So that's an easy final step. All right. These are just um, some review questions. Probably should have put these first. What is the speed and acceleration of the ball at its at the top of its trajectory? The speed is zero meters per second and the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, the magnitude of that number, 9.8 meters per second squared. But most importantly, it is accelerating downward all the time. All right. Um, Good luck, and if you have any questions, let me know.